so glad that you decided to join us this morning. If you are visiting with us today, please fill out a Visitor's Connect card located in the front of your pew and return to the offering box as you exit this morning. Are you ready to serve? If so, please fill out an entry form located in the foyer and return to the offering box. Join us Wednesday night at 6.30 for adult Bible study in the main sanctuary. Ladies, we will also be meeting right before service starts at 6 p.m., so make plans to join us. Our caring and sharing box is located at the back of the sanctuary. Please bring non perishable foods to help that ministry. Please see your updates page for any additional information and your ways to give. Now let's stand up and get ready to worship. Amen. Hallelujah. As you're standing across the building this morning, Hope you've had a blessed week. Uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. This morning I woke up, and I normally don't do my Bible study on Sunday morning prior to church just because I want to have a fresh and new mind for what pastors got. But this morning, the Holy Spirit quickened me and said, get your Bible study out. And I've been doing one about worship, and it says, take up your rock. And it asked, have you ever questioned whether God was there and whether God had his hand in something? Have you ever done that? I know I have, absolutely. Amen. Usually it's a trial, right? It's a tough time. How many of us got tough times going on in the world today? Amen. We've all got them. But you know, Joshua and the children of Israel, they were crossing the river of Jordan. And God told them, take up a stone and build an altar to me, right? What was that altar for? It was for remembrance. It was for a reminder. It was so that whenever they seen it again, they would know. When their children seen it again, they would know. So that when they seen those rocks, they wouldn't think about the struggle that had happened, they would think about the blessing that had just happened, that they just came through the river of Jordan. Amen? So God's with us today. He's in this today. He's got his hand in everything that's going on in our country, in Afghanistan, no matter what. Amen? Yeah, you can give God a hand of praise today because he's got it under control. That's right. He's got it all under control today. So today I want us, let's pray for Afghanistan. Let's pray for Israel. Let's pray for our hurricane victims in, in Louisiana and Mississippi. Pray for them. But understand this, that God's got it under control. Amen? God's got everything in his hands this morning. Let's lift our hands. Let's welcome him in this place this morning. Father, we love you. We come today first, God, to petition you. Lord, we come to petition you for the people of Louisiana and Mississippi, Lord God, that you will touch them, that you will put protection around them, God. We believe this morning that you have all things working for your good, Lord, and we believe right now, God, that you are going to heal, that you're going to protect, that you're going to comfort, Lord. Everything's for your purpose. We ask you, Lord, for Afghanistan and the people there. We ask you for Israel, Lord God, that you would send blessing to Israel. Bless us this day, Heavenly Father. Come in a mighty way today right here at Bethel and pour out your spirit. Father, you are welcome here. You are wanted here, and we desire you this morning. Lord, we lift our hands and our praise to you, and we love you this morning. In Jesus' name, everyone asked, amen and amen. Worship with us, church. Let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the way, the truth, and the light is the beginning and the end. And much more than this, my friend, He's the Son of Man. He's coming back again. Oh, let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the way, the truth, and the light is the beginning and the end. And much more than this, my friend, He is the Son of Man. He's coming back again. Father, I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost, all these three in one, let me tell you who Jesus is, He's the rock of all ages, He's the Alpha and the Omega, He's the way, the truth, and the light is the beginning. More than this, my friend, he's a son of man, he's coming. 
coming back again I believe in the Father And I believe in the Son I believe in the Holy Ghost All these three in one Let me tell you who Jesus is He's the rock of all ages He's the Alpha and the Omega He's the way, the truth And the light He's the beginning and the end And much more than this, my friend He's the Son of Man He's coming back
is His, and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, He is, he he is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is, He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? But by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He can supply all my need. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. He is. He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows? and the downs when by my faith I know my God is more than enough He can supply all my need He is my El Shaddai He always looks out for me Jehovah Jireh He is He is my God All of the earth is His and the fullness thereof Everything that I need You can be sure of Jehovah Jireh, He is, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is, He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough, more than enough. More than enough, more than enough, Jehovah Jireh, He is, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is, He is my Oh, my. 
Hallelujah. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. I'm going to do one of my favorites this morning. Hope you'll like it. I am a poor wayfaring stranger traveling through this world of woe. There is no sickness, no toil, no danger in that bright world to which I go. I'm going there to see my mother. I'm going there no more to roam. I'm just a go win over Jordan. I'm just a go Sometimes dark clouds will gather o'er me. My path is rough, my path is steep, but golden fields lie out before me where weary eyes no more shall weep. I'm going there to see my Savior who shed his precious blood for me. I'm just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going to my home. I'm just a going to my So this morning, before I begin, I want to ask you a very, I don't know, some could say a serious question, some could say a, an in-depth question. I want to ask you, how do you get in the pool? How do you get in the swimming pool? Jump in, dive in? Who, 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 who just is a jumper in her? Who just jumps on in? All the kids raise their hands, okay. All right. Who is a dive in? Hey, Brother Tim, I got you. Yeah, some, some more divers. Who's a toothpicker? Who does toothpicks? You, I don't know, what do, do y'all call it? A pencil dive? Okay, who pencil dives? I've always called it a toothpick. Where have we been our whole life? All right, I ain't, <laughs> I ain't toothpicking anymore, but I used to toothpick when I was back in high school. Okay, um, who is a get in like this? Oh, that's cold. <laughs> All the ladies. <laughs> Who could just care less about getting in? Latrell. Yep. That's some of us too. Amen, right? But today, I want to talk to you about how do you get in the pool, so going deeper. And so, um, before I begin this morning, let's pray, please, and just pray the anointing over me that, that I will speak the words that God wants spoken this morning that his Holy Spirit would speak through me today into each and every one of our lives because I'm speaking to me this morning as well. For, Father, Lord Jesus, I ask you this morning, Lord, that your spirit would just speak through me today, that your anointing would flow through me and into this house, Lord God, and into every single heart in this place. I ask you, Lord God, today that the words that are spoken are not mine, that they're yours. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, today that the hearts that hear, the ears that hear, Lord God, that, that they would just just be planted in their lives, Lord God, today. Just let this seed be planted. Let the ground be fertile. And then you do the work, Lord God. You do the watering and the sunshine. And we just ask you today, Lord God, to help us all to grow deeper with you. Help us all, Heavenly Father, to get out of our comfort zones and just try to do more for you than we've ever done before. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, this morning, God is calling you out of the shallow end. This morning, God is calling you out of the shallow end. He's calling you into the pool, number one, but he's also calling you out of the shallow end. 
He's calling you deeper. And, it's, and when, I, when I think about going deeper, three questions kind of pose to my mind. Number one, how do we go deeper? How does that even happen? Number two, who gets to go deeper? And number three, what do we get when we go deeper? Because we all want to get something for our time and effort, right? So Ephesians, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, 18, and 19 will be where we're at. Verse 17 starts and says, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and what? Deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Amen? So how do we go deeper? Let's talk about that first. How do we go deeper? If we look at verse 17, it says, so that Christ may do what? May dwell inside of us. The Christ may dwell inside of us. If we dwell, we're staying, right? If we dwell, we are staying. We are living there. We are abiding there. And if Christ is dwelling inside of us, then he is living inside of us. It's not one of those, Jesus, I'm going to let you come in the door, but you got to stop. It's not one of those, I'm going to let you have This piece of, I'll let you have my job, Lord, but I'm not going to give you my family. Or I'll let you have my family, but I'm not going to give you my job. It's not one of those that we pick and choose what Jesus gets to get, right? It's not, that's not what abiding is. That's not what dwelling is. Dwelling means he has access to every part of it. Every part of it. Our kids live in our homes, right? And they abide, they dwell in our homes. They have access to everything in our home. Everything. They don't have to... My children do not have to ask to go to the refrigerator to get something. Now, you may have different rules, but I, I, mine don't. Mine have access to everything. They have access to my wallet. They have, not really, Case. Where's he at? Okay. They have access to every, I mean, Clay's got access to our Amazon cart to put stuff in. He can't buy, but he can put stuff in if he wants it. But I'm not saying he gets it all, but he, he has access to put stuff in. They have access to what we have, Right? Because they dwell with us. They are ours. They are our family. That's how Christ wants to be. Christ wants access to us. This morning, Christ wants access to you. Are you willing to give him access today? That's the question. He wants access to you. So, I also want to say this this morning. If you have not allowed Christ to have access to you, today you can Today, number one, the first thing about going deeper is you have to do what? You got to get in. You got to get into the pool. So if you don't know who Jesus is, and this is totally foreign language to you, guess what? Today is a day, is a new day that you can come right now. And listen, we'll stop right, I'll stop everything I'm doing right now. We'll pray you through if you want to come right now. It's that important that you get saved. It's that important that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. That is number one, key, most important thing. As bad as I want every single one of our teenagers filled full of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and praying people and starting a revival everywhere, I want them saved. I want them saved so that I know when eternity comes where they're going to be at. But Christ wants to dwell inside of us. You know, I got to thinking about going deeper, and, and if, you, if you don't have Christ inside of you and you try to go deeper, do you know what you do? You float. You float because you're empty. You float because you don't have inside of you what you need to have inside of you. So don't, don't try to go in the water. See, it's, it's really pointless if we're full of hot air just to get in the water because we don't really even get wet, do we? We don't really even get wet. We just float on the top, and that's where we stay at. But Ezekiel chapter 47, Ezekiel's being led by an unknown guide. Okay, It doesn't really give him a name, but he's being led down a river. And the river begins at the temple of God. Does anybody know that scripture? Ezekiel 47, it's really, really powerful, and it talks about, it talks about Ezekiel standing there, and the, the river comes out of the temple, it comes out of the temple, it doesn't come out of social media, it doesn't come out of a sporting event, or a famous athlete, or a politician, or a coronavirus, or, or anything else, it doesn't come from that, okay, the river comes from the temple of God, that's where it starts, and see, Ezekiel gets in, and when he gets in, the Bible says it's ankle deep. How many of y'all feel like you may be ankle deep with God or have been ever in your past? I have. I've been there before. 
But as Ezekiel continues to push on and the, guy, and the guide continues to measure down the river, he's just measuring down the river. And as he continues to go down the river, it goes from ankle deep to knee deep. And as he pushes forward, he goes from knee deep all the way down to waist deep. And then as he gets going farther and he gets down, he gets past his waist. And now he's like, I can't even walk because I have to swim. It's consuming. He's gone to a deeper level. And see, sometimes we think about we're living in today's society where everything is a microwave, right? We want everything heated up right now. We want it done right now. We want to be, you know, I want to have lost 30 pounds yesterday, all right? I mean, that's, that's the diet plan that I need. I need to have lost weight yesterday, okay? And I wish that every time that I could do something that it was done right now. I wish everything was done right now. I wish my kids did exactly what I want them to do right now when I say it, right? We all the same way. We want it done right now. We want, we want the biggest raise right now. We want the most blessing right now. We want to catch the biggest fish right now, right, Kay? I mean, I caught a big red fish yesterday, okay? He didn't know he was going to get called out from Dad putting a picture on Facebook, but it's okay. Y'all, we want things happening right now, but sometimes it's a process. There's a pretty good football coach right now that talks about a process all the time, right? Roll Tide. If you're not an Alabama fan, we'll pray for you later. But, but Coach Saban talks about all the time about trust the process. Trust the process. That's what he preaches in his program. Trust the process. Trust, trust the process. So all of us underling coaches, we all preach that too. Trust the process. Trust what's going on. Most, most of these guys, minus Christopher right here, play for me at some, some level or whatever. And, and we talk about trusting the process. Get in that weight room and trust what it's going to do to you. Get on the field and trust what those reps are going to do. Get, get in the classroom and trust what it's going to do to get your homework done. Get, get into life. Get in our job, right, adults? And trust what it's going to produce for our family as long as we trust the process of getting better every single day and growing every single day, right? Every single day we have to grow. Every, Ezekiel didn't jump in. Now, this is Ezekiel we're talking about. He didn't just go and just jump in the deep end of the river. He started walking down the river. He got in ankle deep, walked to his knees, walked to his waist, and then got consumed. But the first step is getting in. And then we have to take daily steps. We have to take steps in our study habits. We have to take steps in our prayer habits. We have to take steps in our worship habits. We have to take steps in our service habits. And what are we doing for the kingdom of God? Because if you're not then are you moving down the river? I'm just going to be real this morning. If you're not serving in church, if you're not worshiping, if you're not praying, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not talking to other people about Jesus, are you moving down the river or not? And finally, I think going deeper takes being willing to listen being willing to listen to the holy spirit because the holy spirit speaking to you today probably already during worship you've been spoken to it some way shape or form you may have just thought oh well, that was a cool thought where'd that come from right you ever been sitting in church and like just some kind of thought pop in your head and you're like what was that that's the holy spirit trying to speak to you i remember when i first started trying to you know think about as a teenager getting saved and just just trying to encompass, okay, what does that even mean, right? Y'all remember those days? It ain't been very long ago for some of y'all. Some of us has been a little longer than others. Some of us it hadn't been very long. But you remember that moment when you were trying to figure out what does it mean to even be saved? Like, what are you talking about? I'm not in danger, right, teenagers? See, a lot of us, we grew up in churches, right? We grew up in churches where we heard that all the time, and we heard explanations all the time. And we heard what that means all the time. But we're living, like the pastor said, we're living in a time where Bible illiteracy is just running rampant. No one knows what these words mean. I mean, we, can, we sung the song Jehovah. Most kids nowadays don't even know what Jehovah means. Think about that. If you go to school right now and you ask them, hey, who's, who's heard the story of Noah and the whale? Who's heard the story of Noah and the whale? Y'all heard the story of Noah and the whale, really? Noah had a what? 
arc. Yeah. Jonah went in the whale. See? You, you with me? And I'm not trying to call them out, but I'm telling you, seriously, guys, you go to school and they just think, what well, was a Bible name? And yeah, I know there was something about a whale. But the depth is not there. Do you understand that? The depth is not there. As parents, are we raising kids and young people? As a youth pastor, am I raising kids? See, that's not on them. That's on me as a youth pastor. Now, most of it's just the fact that they think anything I say is just like Bible truth. So they're just like, yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it. And in case they didn't even think about it, he was like, yeah, I've heard it. Okay. And he knows the difference. Now that I've said something, Colin's like, yeah, I know the difference now. Okay. Because they're brilliant. We're actually blessed with a very, very smart youth group. They're, they're awesome. So y'all are doing a great job, parents and grandparents and everyone else who raises them. Thank you. So the question is still brought up. Number two here, who gets to go deeper? Who gets to go deeper? See, in the Old Testament times, the Pharisees would have it, have it that they were the ones that got to go deeper, and you had to go ask them so that they could help you even understand any of it, right? They were the educated. They were the ones that, that you needed to go see about everything, and they were the only ones that got the right to go deeper. But that is not true. Jesus came for what? To bring us salvation, but he also came for clarity, and he also came for understanding, and he also came to show us the way to do things, and he also came to show us that, that depth is for every single one of us. Every single one of us. It's not just for pastor. It's not just for youth pastor. It's not just for the board and deacons. It's not just for them. It's for every single person in here. It's for every single person in the world. Depth is for you, and today you have an option to go deeper. I got to looking at how did, how did Jesus show going deeper in his walk and in his life. And the biggest way I can say that Jesus did that was when he got alone with God. He got alone with God. And if you look at the Bible, it's some people that got alone with God. I mean, Jesus, he went and got alone with God. Job, going through some of the hardest stuff ever imaginable, right? You know the story of Job. Everything taken away. Everything. Boils all over his body. That big sores, guys, if you don't know what boils are. But Job didn't figure out who God really was until he got in that heap of ash. That's when Job really had the relationship with Jesus and the relationship with God manifested. Paul, he found the call to ministry when he was in Arabia. He wasn't around a bunch of people asking them, hey, what do you think? Should I go into ministry or not? What if Paul had listened to somebody that said, I don't think you should go into ministry? Where would we be today if Paul hadn't went into ministry? Wow, right? But Paul got along with God and figured him out. I got to feel like John figured out who God was when he was in exile in Pathmos, right? I got to feel like he figured out who God was. But sometimes we just have to be alone with God. Sometimes we have so much going on that alone is not even a possibility. Adults, we got children, right? Alone's not an easy thing. Children, we got friends. Alone's not an easy thing. We got work. Alone's not an easy thing. We've got travel ball. There is no alone at travel ball. We got every aspect of life. There is no alone. I guess, I guess the only alone you get nowadays is if you get COVID and you get quarantined. That's about the only alone you get. And people are willing to give you all the alone you need for 10 or 12 days, right? But we got vacation, we got work, we got ball, we got all this stuff that consumes our time and it consumes our thoughts and it consumes our energy and we're, we're still unwilling to go get alone with God because a lot happens when you get alone with somebody. They say one of the best ways to figure out how, how you match up with somebody as a, as a spouse is to sit down Guys, sit down with her and just be quiet and just see how that goes. How does that go? How does your mind work? Girls, sit down with him and say nothing and just see how it goes. Do they get antsy and they just got to go do something? Are they going to be restless? Do they, do they sit down? Are they willing to just listen to you? Are they, are they willing to just be? Because if you can just be with somebody, you're probably going to be okay right? 
If you can just be comfortable being in the same area with somebody and not speaking and not feel uncomfortable, that's a good thing. God wants us to do that with him as well. Sometimes it's good to go to God and not talk. You ever done that? You ever just went and sat and listened? Because he will speak, but sometimes we're too busy. God, I need this, and God, I need that, and God, I need this, and God, I need this. And listen, they're all valid wants, and God wants to know your wants. God wants to know your needs. God wants to know your desires. But guess what? Sometimes God wants you to just shut up, and he wants you to listen, and he just wants you to hear what he has to say. Because how many of y'all want something from God today? I do. How many of you need something in your family today? We do. How many of you need something in your body today? We all, we all have something in our family or whatever. God's willing to give it to you. God's willing to give it to you in one way, shape, or another. Sometimes we just got to sit still and accept it. Just need to be alone. See, going deeper can be defined as pushing past my personal hindrances and distractions and wading into the deep waters of God's presence with my praise, my worship, and an open heart of expectation. I want you to look at that real quick while it's on the board. You've got to push past your personal hindrances and distractions. How hard is that in life? How hard is that to say, I've got this going on, God, and I don't really have time to read my Bible today. Anybody else ever done that? Anybody else? Okay, this is always mine. I'm going to read my Bible later. Uh, I'll read it later. And I get home, and I've dealt with them all day. And then I get home, and I've dealt with Clara and Cleet and Case all day, and we've had dinner, and we've done homework. Oh, homework. And we've done all that stuff. And some of y'all work like, like very difficult jobs. I know you. And y'all work hard jobs. Some of you are retired. That's, that's tough, too, being retired. Some of y'all we won't even let retire. But it's tough, and then I'm going to read later, God. I'm going to read later. And then somebody turns on Netflix, amen? Uh, maybe that's just me, all right? I may just be talking to Nate this morning when they turn on Netflix. Maybe I'm the only one that binge watches something on Netflix. I know I probably am. Me and you on the computer, you're, we're the only ones that binge watch Netflix. But we just put it off, and we put it off, and we put it off. I've always heard it said, and I, and I never really understood it until it happened to me. Not coming to church, not reading your Bible, not doing those things, not praying, is easy. It's easy. It's like not working out. It's easy. Not getting some physical exercise is easy. Not eating healthy is easy. Our world today especially has made eating unhealthy very easy. Not getting close to God is easy. Everybody hearing that? Not getting close to God is easy. It takes some work. It's just like getting close to your spouse, husbands and wives. It's easy to not be close to them. It's easy, right? It takes work to get closer. It takes work. It takes dedication. It takes some sacrifice. But going back to that quote, Cleek, push past your personal hindrances and distractions and wade into the deep waters of God's presence with your praise. And I misspelled praise there. I just seen that. With our praise, our worship, and an open heart of expectation. I'm a math teacher. Don't judge my typing skills. But pushing into the deep waters of God's presence, y'all. Listen, I, w I was this way, okay? How many of y'all would consider me a shy person? My mom and dad are here, and my sister, and they can tell you just how shy I used to be. I was. Shannon, yeah. Okay. I was shy. Y'all, I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to get in front of nobody. I really wasn't going to sing in front of nobody. I wasn't going to speak in front of I had a speech class my freshman year of college at Def Jeff Davis Community College in Britain, and I almost threw up day one. 
All we had to do was spend 15 seconds talking about ourselves. And I got up there and I said, um, and I stood there for 14 seconds. And I got an F. I didn't care. I was willing to fail. <laughs> I was willing to fail. I didn't care. <laughs> but you know, sometimes when you realize who God is and when you realize what God's calling on your life is, you push past some of the things that you have your own hindrances with. You push past some of the ways that you do things. You push past some of the preconceived conceptions of or, or realities that you thought were reality, but you realize that there's more. I talk about it. I've talked. I don't know. If I, I may have talked about it every single time I preach. I don't know, but I'm going to continue to talk about it because it's very relevant today. But when I came to church at Bethel in the little old building over there, when, the first time I came to church, I was scared to death, y'all. They were speaking in tongues and people were being laid out in the spirit. I was scared to death, brother Jeff. Scared to death. I mean, I, I, I thought they was killing people. I didn't know what was going on. People laying, laying in the floor. And I'm like, what happened? It was beyond my level of comfort. It was, it was way past my level of comfort. I mean, I had never really even seen people dance around worshiping. I was like, yeah, it's kind of fun, you know. And then they started praying in tongues. I'm like, what is going on? This is different. But then I started focusing on, see, y'all, when I came to Bethel, I didn't come for any other reason to see her. That's it. That's the only reason I ever came to this church was to see her. That's it. Shannon was involved in that. But that was it. That was the only reason. But as I got here and I started seeing people and I started seeing their daily lives, you with me? I didn't come and, and listen, you can see one thing right here in this building. Does everybody understand that? You can see one thing sitting right here in this building, and you can see how Brother Jack is in this building. But how are you going to really figure out who Brother Jack is? You're going to see him outside this building, and you're going to see him on his job, and you're going to see him with his family, and you're going to see him at the restaurant, and you're going to see him wherever, doing whatever. And I started noticing people, and I was like, listen, their life is different than what I'm used to. Their life is, and not that I grew up in a bad home. Y'all had a great mom and daddy. They're here. But their life, their lifestyle, their worship lifestyle was different than anything I had ever experienced. And I wanted to know what that was about. So my question to you today is this. Do we show our depth to those around us every day? Because, yes, you do. You show your depth every day. You show your depth. It may be ankle deep. It may be knee deep. It may be waist deep. It may be consuming. But you show your depth. Amen? You show your depth. Because I, I say it all the time, too. They watch every single thing that we do. They watch everything. No, I'm imperfect. I am imperfect. I had a moment in the weight room Friday. I wasn't happy. I apologize to them there, but listen, they watch every single thing that we do, every single thing. See, I started figuring out, though, that whereas I didn't understand the speaking in tongues and I didn't understand being slain in the Spirit and I didn't understand the depth that some of the other people had at this church at the time, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what was going on. I started figuring out that they had a different desire than I had. Because, see, when I came here, I desired to see a girl. I was a teenage boy. Y'all don't judge me. Okay. I was, I was a teenage boy. Y'all don't judge me. I feel a lot of judgment right now. They're all there right now. They know what I mean, but I need y'all to know what I mean. Some, some of y'all do. Huh? <laughs> No, Jess didn't want to complicate things at church, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> I started realizing, though, that people's desires were different. And I started realizing, too, that, that our, our desire 
develops our depth. Our desire develops how deep we go because I couldn't go deep because I didn't know that I even wanted that. Does that make sense? You can't go somewhere you don't want to go. You can't go deeper if you don't even want to go deeper. You can't go deeper if you don't even understand what deeper is. You can't do it. You can't, under, you can't go where you don't know to go. You're only, and, and that was another thing for me. When I first started coming, I was like, they better not come over here trying to pray for me. <laughs> better not. Uh-uh. Put, put your hand on my forehead. We're fitting to, fitting to throw down because I didn't want to be laying on the floor. I didn't understand it. That wasn't fixing to happen to me if I didn't want it. I wasn't fixing to get the fullness of the Holy Spirit if I didn't want it. And so then I started praying for a desire. Then I started praying for my desires to change, my wants to change, how I viewed God to change. Because I had preconceived notions, and I, and I needed to change those. So point number three, and I've only got six more pages of notes, guys, so just hang in there, okay? Sorry. All right, so number three, where does this going deeper get us? Where does it get us? Number one, it gets us wet. Number one, it gets us wet. Number one, it gets us filled full of the Holy Spirit. When you go deeper, you receive the Holy Spirit. And if we go back to Ezekiel 47, he talks about getting in the deep water and the edge of the water and how healthy everything is around it. When you go later on in chapter 47, he talks about how healthy the stuff is around the deep water and how there's beautiful trees and how there's animals that are feeding off all the fruit on the trees and there's just all this good stuff around the deep water. Have you ever paid attention to the root systems on trees on the side of a river? They're not shallow. They're deep. They go deep. And, and, and trees that have deep root systems are more healthy. They're deeper. They have more nutrients. They're stronger. See, our church has seen some growth over the last few months. Amen? Despite COVID, despite other in social distancing and everything else, we've seen some growth. But you know what happens if we constantly focus on growing? We break. If we constantly focus on growing, we break. See, it's like a peach tree that gets too many peaches on it and those little bitty thin limbs, and they can't support it. What happens to those limbs? They break. That's why we got to go out there, and we have to tie the limbs up, right? And we have to do what we can do to support it. Are we doing what we can do to help things go deeper? Y'all, Bethel is a place of growth. Bethel is a place of growth but it's also a place of depth. And I want to tell you this today, and, and he may come back and tell me, hey, you need to hush. But our pastor has a vision for our church to grow, to build, to be an impactful place in this community. And we have that ability here. We have that ability here, right here, with the people in this room to come here and, and do something. But y'all, we're building a new building over here. I know it's not going up near as fast as I want it to, or he wants it to, or you want it to. But guess what? It's going up. We're getting doors this week. We're getting doors this week. There's progress being made. We're going to try to get walls on it within the next month. So, so be praying for prosperity for our building program. Amen? You should, did you know that you should pray for our building, pro, our building fund and our building program every single day? You guys should pray, especially because y'all are the ones that want to get in and shoot basketball. I pray for it every day, but not because I want you to shoot basketball, but because I want to get in there and so we can have a bigger youth room and we're not in a sardine can back here. It's tight. When we get to playing games, we disrupt Bible study. But I think Jesus is happy with that. Because, see, without depth, Lives don't change. Without depth, souls aren't saved. Without depth, chains aren't broken. Without depth, addictions are not broken. Without depth, bodies are not healed. Without depth, 
we break. We break. Relationships are broken. Bodies are broken. Finances are broken. Our spirits get broken without death. See, in Luke 5 and 4, Jesus is talking to Simon, and he says, put into deep water. Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Put out into deep water. See, I believe that Jesus can do anything, right? Does everybody else believe that Jesus can do anything? Okay. They were in a ship, or they were in a boat, whatever, and they were in the water. I believe that Jesus could have said, hey, put your nets out, and you're going to catch a bunch of fish right here, even in the shallow water, right? But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus said, hey, put out into deep water. Put out into deep water, and y'all know these dudes have been fishing all night long, and they ain't caught nothing. And that wasn't like they were rookies. They were fishermen. That's what they did for a living. And they didn't look at Jesus and say, man, are you crazy? What you talking? We've been fishing all night long. We're not going to do it. They said, yes, sir. He said, yes, sir. Now, Simon did say we've been fishing all night, but they still went, and they still did it. They just obeyed. I want you to think about this, too. It would have been very easy for them to look at Jesus and say, look, we got a good thing going here, right? We got a good thing going, Jesus. How about you just hang out here with us and keep helping us catch all these fish, right? We got a good thing going. Let's not mess it up. How about we just stay here and keep catching all these fish and keep making a bunch of money? Because it would have been very easy for them to do that. Because Jesus said, come follow me, be fishers of men, right? It would have been very easy for them to say, Jesus, how about we just stay here and you hook us up, we'll hook you up, we'll, just, we'll all be rich. We'll all be good. Because they caught a ton of fish, right? They had to call another boat over. But they didn't. They let everything go to follow Jesus. See, those fishermen were in a comfort zone of their cell. They, 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 they had their own life. They were fishermen. That's what they did. And they had to get out of that comfort zone. Somebody needs to hear that. They had to get out of that comfort zone to be able to let God work in their life. They had to get out of there to be able to, they had to go deeper. I still think Jesus could have said, put your nets down in the shallow water. And I think they would have caught so many, they would have caught just as many fish. It didn't matter the water to Jesus. I think it mattered the water to the guys. I think the deep water mattered for the fishermen more than it did for them. Because Jesus can do a miracle anyway. He can say, hey, put your net on that floor right there and get that fish. But I think there's something to that concept of push out deeper. Push out deeper. Let yourself go into deeper water. Today, 